Sup guys, Alex from Nothing Box TV here, and I have a question for you. What was your favorite Need for Speed game? Was it the OG Most Wanted? Maybe it was Underground 1 or 2. Or maybe it's that new one called Need for Speed and Heat. All those games are pretty great, but the one I'm going to talk about today is this weird bootleg looking one that I got on Origin for free, and I still feel like I deserve a refund. No, I'm not going to declare that Most Wanted 2012 is the worst racing game ever made, because we all know which game that is. But this certainly is a game with missing potential. Criterion Games, known for the iconic Burnout series, were set down by EA executives with a proposal that probably went along something like this. Three, two, one. Can we not? Great job on Hopper Suit, you guys. We're so proud of that. We want you guys to make the new Most Wanted. But you know all that character and charm in Hopper Suit because you're burnout devs? We don't want any fun anymore. But we'll be so filled with pride and accomplishment, you guys will get to do space battles for the new Battlefront 2. Yeah, up top. Six feet. Yep, yeah, sorry. Because of this bizarre shift in quality, the burnout developers had a near perfect track record until now. And to have them create a racing game that intentionally feels like a discount burnout game, but also somehow feeling like a lifeless need for speed game, doesn't really sound that much fun to me. Can we get back to the review? You can't make me, me! But here's the catch. Criterion's Hot Pursuit was a really solid example of how burnout and need for speed elements can come together in harmony. But despite the success, most one in 2012 ended up being the polar opposite in my opinion. But before I completely destroy this game, I should at least highlight some positives before I leave it to die alongside Floored Out. Well graphically it's pretty good for a 360 PS3 game. Oh, you want me to keep going? I did enjoy the shortcut smashing and billboard bashing mechanics that made its way from Burnout Paradise. Although, some of the developers on the billboards make it seem more like grave sites, given how many companies EA has shut down now. The finding cars mechanic was also a really unique addition that kind of reminded me of Driver San Francisco's car swapping mechanic. and each car has a special set of events to compete for new upgrades. Another fantastic feature is being able to do almost everything without entering the pause menu. Simple things like upgrading your car or choosing events with the D-pad without any full screen menu should really be in more games at this point. Processing power has improved enough to the point that pause menu shouldn't be full screen slideshows anymore. Hey guys, I don't think the speed in Need for Speed is talking about going fast. The police are back from Hot Pursuit, and while they're more aggressive in certain contexts, that's all I can say for now without starting to get into the negatives. So we made it through the positives. So why do I hate this game so much? Don't worry, I didn't kill my family or anything. Just my childhood. Yes, I'm fully aware of how dramatic I'm being right now. Picture a 10 year old you with little gaming experience. You weren't allowed to play shooters, so what were you stuck with? Mostly racing games and platformers. You might have gotten very acquainted with Mario, Banjo, Jack and Daxter, perhaps some Ratchet and Clank as well. Specifically, the amazing racing games you've played also start piling up. Burnout, Flat Out, the classic Need for Speed games, and maybe throw in some Hydro Thunder at your local pizza place in there as well. As you grow up, the arcade racers do too. Games like Grid and Dirt challenged you more, but they were still more arcade than simulation. The truly arcade racing games didn't go away either, with Split Second, Flat Out Ultimate Carnage, and Burnout Paradise setting the standard for destruction. But you're a young old fart now, and you remember you have the 2012 Most Wanted you got free years ago and forgot about. You have some memories of the classic Most Wanted coming back to you while it installs. You fire it up, and are greeted with the most unenthusiastic racing game you've ever seen. Also, quick side note, Edge of the Earth by 30 Seconds to Mars in Hot Pursuit is a lot better than Butterflies and Hurricanes by Muse in The New Most Wanted. Just, just FYI, I just want to make that clear. What happened to the edgy aesthetic? What happened to any aesthetic? Where's the dramatic and hilarious cutscenes? Why is the blacklist just a list of cars and not driven by Hot Topic employees? Why do the cars drive like the old drag race modes, but with 20 lanes instead of 4? At least the better the car, the more natural the handling, right? But still, why do the lower end cars, which are not low end at all, by the way, feel like you're merely asking where to turn using a suggestion box? And you'll find out if it takes your advice in a few business days. It doesn't. To make matters worse, the ability to find a supercar right out of the gate really backfires on the gameplay. The game intends on the player utilizing the whole carsonal and completing their unique events altogether, but instead you have zero reason to downgrade back to anything else, and you rise up the blacklist without a sweat. 
Speaking of the handling, the police are back with the occasional vengeance. Many chases are evaded within seconds. However, the police have something you don't. A trebuchet for cars. Sometimes the game will flip a switch so that a police car will collide into yours fast enough to create a black hole. That makes me think though, why do cops have such a hard time in pursuits in real life? Why don't they just open the INI file and just change the rubber banding to 500%? Problem solved, amateurs. Not only are the pursuits themselves weird, so are the methods to evade them. In the 2005 Most Wanted, the main way to reduce the heat level of your vehicle was to either switch to another car and let it cool down over time, or if you're not patient, you can repaint, change the body kit, and adjust other cosmetic aspects of your car to bring it down much faster. Did Criterion decide to throw out all these pre-existing mechanics that are just fantastic that they could have just copy-pasted for something that makes way less sense for Need for Speed as a franchise? Yeah. That's right, they brought the color change feature from Burnout Paradise and changed nothing about it. The use of it in Paradise is perfectly fine because it's an arcade racer that's a bit detached from realism more so than the Need for Speed franchise. But when you throw this into a game with pursuits, it's incredibly strange to hear the police nonchalantly announce that your vehicle has changed colors instantaneously. As if it's just a normal thing that happens all the time. Not only that, you cool back down to heat level 1 each time you fully evade the police instead of climbing higher with each pursuit, ensuring that it's always more difficult for you to make it more difficult for you. This is why this frustrated me so much. You have a half-baked burnout game and a half-baked Need for Speed game, and you call it my favorite Need for Speed game ever made. And the only two things they bother to keep were the police and a blacklist. On paper, you have a pretty lackluster but otherwise serviceable racing game. But when you name it after, arguably, the greatest Need for Speed game ever made in the now 24 game franchise, you're gonna piss off the people who expect your game of the same name to be at least almost as good as the original. And in my opinion, it doesn't even come close. Also, I don't like news. So what did you guys think of the 2012 Most Wanted? Did you guys hate it as much as I did? Or did you guys find it pretty enjoyable? Let me know below. And stick around and subscribe if you want to see the 2005 Most Wanted game box coming soon. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Stay hashtag blessed.